recording. I thought you were going to put that on the stand. Uh, it is on a stand. I'm going to put it down in a sec. Um, but we are. Do you guys want to actually here? Let me set this thing down, and I can introduce you guys. Can introduce yourself. Sure. Um, let me flip this back around so I can just make sure I got the right. Okay, you guys are There's all good. space in here, right? Do you want to introduce yourselves? Sure. There's lots of room. All right. Go for it. I'm Alice Chung. I'm the Food Programs Coordinator here at West Coast Kids Cancer Foundation. I'm Shannon Hartwig, Executive Director at West Coast Kids Cancer Foundation. And then hiding in the corner is Kenny. Well, but they know me. Right. <laughs> and Corey. And Corey. <laughs> um, and uh, we, we thought we'd stop by <clears> and, uh, and just check this out. We met Alice and Shannon a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Feels like a while ago, actually. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a podcast, but apparently yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't. Um, and then you guys are doing some amazing things. So we stopped by the office. Um, I'm the voice behind the camera, so I'll just kind of show you what's going on here. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to film a little. Do you want to tell them what's in all the freezers, what you guys are doing? Sure. Can I get you can walk with them. You can open them up if you want, I guess. Yeah, yeah, please, please. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, West Coast Kids Cancer Foundation uh, supports families who have a child with cancer or blood disorders with really practical, timely support. So we want to make sure that families have what they need during what is likely the most difficult time. Um, and so one of the things that we did do, that we never expected to do, is we deliver thousands of units of food now to the hospital and to families' homes. And Alice is best equipped to talk about all of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, one of our main food programs is called Food in the Freezer. We have a dedicated freezer on the eighth floor of BC Children's, uh, and it is filled every single week with hundreds of frozen, single-serving, ready-to-eat meals. Um, so these are the freezers by which we replenish that particular one. Um, and I'll show you inside. Each shelf is a different category oh, wow. because something uh, that's important to know is that comfort food looks different from family to family, from culture mm. to culture. And we want to make sure, you know, this is a really challenging time. You can eat the food that nourishes you, that makes you feel just a little bit of comfort. Um, you can see butter chicken <laughs> is a category unto yeah. itself. It is Turned out a popular one. Yeah. Our most popular one. <clears throat> uh, we have vegetarian. We've got breakfast, waffles, frittatas. I love the eggs. We've got smoothie. <laughs> also in high so demand. Popular. I love my so popular. This is the number one request when I started at this job is get us waffles. Um, we've got pizzas there. Um, and I'll show you inside. Hey, retailers, you should notice these are donated by Best Buy. <laughs> oh, the freezers, yeah. Yeah, the freezers are donated by Best Buy. Uh, and then here we have meat, we have pasta. The whole shelf is just mac and cheese. Mac and very, cheese. very popular with the kids. Wow. We've got burritos. We've got. We always have vegan, gluten-free options. Um, same with the burritos from Amy's there, um, and burritos up here. And so the food comes from a variety of sources. You can see a lot of it is just purchased. Um, some of our partners, like Savon, will um, are you know have given us a discount. Um, others like Pace Processing, which make our burritos, our pizzas, and our chicken pot pies. They actually donate all of their product to oh, wow. us. Which is incredibly generous and those are some of our most popular products too right if you think about what do kids want to eat chicken pot pie burritos pizzas. can we um this is what a week worth of food a day worth of food 10 yeah. days worth of food like what is that yeah so we stock these pretty regularly um what happens is we have uh suzanne dunbar at bc children's who is the fam patient parent yeah parent patient advocate yeah, so she's there to, to make sure um, she liaises with the hospital to make sure mm. the families have what they need. Good for you. Okay. I wouldn't yeah. have gotten that title. Yeah. No, I would, I would have left that one alone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just uh, And she's amazing. So every week um, she will take a look inside our freezer in the hospital and let us know how much is left in each category. And we have the exact measurements. So we know that, okay, if there's five mac and cheese left, we can fit in 28 more mac and cheeses. Oh. So we will pack so no exactly guessing. the amount mm -hmm. that will fully stock the freezer each week. And that ends up being around 180 frozen meals uh, every single week. 
So we have volunteers that come in, they have the checklist, they'll pull the food, they'll pack it up, they'll drive it over there, and they'll stock that freezer. As sad as it is, is that many, because that's way too many kids being sick. It's yeah. really nice that yeah. you don't have to worry about eating when it's a really shitty time. Wait, can we talk about that? Right? I, that's I, incredible. Because yeah. last time, mm -hmm. I think um, that kind of like talking about filling that need is... Yeah. It's hard to talk about almost, right? Because it's almost like you, you need to know, like, why all this, yeah. right? Like, so so you've got parents that are there with kids that are sick, but, but why all this, right? Why why go to all this trouble? Like, mm -hmm. who who eats these meals, I guess, is probably the... Yeah, so I think when we started um, West Coast Kids, one of the things that we have built our entire organization on is asking families, like, what do you need? What do you right. need next? We're not going to pretend to know. Um, what family is in this situation, and the thing that kept coming up over and over again was, uh, we need food, which is surprising to us. Because you think in a hospital, you got a cafeteria, yeah. you think like you think there'd be food. Totally, and the children's hospital does feed the kids who are patients, so they're they're there and they can get the food that they need. But obviously, if you have a young child, a two or a three year old, you're not going to leave that kid for any amount no. of time no. in a hospital bed with you know hooked up to all yeah. the things to go get food. And uh, if you know the children's hospital campus and the women's hospital campus, you have to go all the way down from the eighth floor across the campus to the cafeteria, which ends up being about a 40 minute round trip mm -hmm. walking. Without a, your kid who's not feeling, I mean, because you, yeah, you, you never know. Little kids can yeah. pull wires. They're not yeah. going to the room sometimes for more than five minutes. So that's where it actually has created a little food desert in the hospital itself. So, and there's also a Safeway right there. But again, to like go down, walk across, to, especially during COVID is when we started this program to risk infection and then bring it back to your yeah. parents who's immunocompromised. That's just not something that parents are going to do. So this allows our parents to um, grab a them. meal, yeah. put it in the microwave in their not room. Start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is honestly... It's the quickness, out. right? People will say that they, they just don't eat. Or we heard this story from one parent who said um, they just survived on peanut butter crackers for weeks. I guess what else do you do though, right? Because, yeah, I, I, yeah you don't... You know when they're sick at home mm -hmm. and you don't necessarily want to leave the room for too long so you just don't know how they're going to feel and then yeah. you're going to blame yourself. All that stuff. Like imagine when they're hooked up to all that like stuff. I mean, million, right, exactly. Family. And there's family, you know, BC Children's serves families all across BC as well as Yukon. And so families that are inpatient there don't necessarily have a support network around them. Right. People mm -hmm. who can like do a grocery run right. and help yeah. them out. Um, and it becomes a pretty big financial component too. If you're 100%. Like DoorDash, if you think grocery deliveries, um, that really, really adds up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And nothing's really close. Like the Safeway's down. It's it's not next door per se. It's down the street. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like the hospital's on 29th to 33, or 31 to 33. That Safeway's on 25. Yeah. And I think that like some of the most moving stories we've heard is um, the day that your child is diagnosed with cancer is often a long day in that you might go to a family doctor in say Prince George and the family doctor might say like oh this blood work actually doesn't look good we need to fly you to Children's immediately then they go in through the emergency room at Children's and they spend the whole day and then they get the worst possible news that their kid actually has cancer they're not going home they're going up to the eighth floor to start treatment immediately so we had a, a nurse tell us this story and a parent actually too tell us that she had been in the hospital for uh, 12 plus hours and had not eaten because she's having the worst day of her life. Her child is facing a really significant situation. And then, um, you know, 9 p.m., the food service is closed, and a nurse was able to go to our freezer, grab a pad thai that we provided, heat it up, and hand this mom food. I should cry when you get it. Like, seriously, it would make you cry. Yeah. yeah. And that mom yeah. said she'll never forget the taste of that pad thai. Because it was like the first yeah. moment that someone like took a second to nourish her, so she could then sort of focus yeah. in the worst possible way, but on this situation that they had to embark on. So, food, like so many cultures and so many things, mm -hmm. right? We, we provide food for more than nutrients. We provide food, uh, food for is generally comfort, comfort, like literally. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's, it's for that, right? Yeah. That'd be so shitty. So you get so you get so you have freezers that are donated. And then you've got food that's donated as well. But you guys and are partially like, paid. So so you're looking at this footage, and there are a lot of freezers in this room. Mm -hmm. Can can we just um, like so 
Shannon's going to be on a podcast with us shortly, but we just thought um, coming here, one of the important things is being able to highlight what you guys do, which I think is amazing. Mm -hmm. And then two is you actually have some things you need, right? Mm -hmm. um, so maybe I think that's a really. Well, good I, th thing I don't think which, I don't think an ask is is yeah out of out of line. No, no. You, you know, know, I mean, our you got a chance. Is, there might be people that can help. Processors. Yeah, like what do you need? What do you want? I mean, fillers. I'm gonna point out again that Best Buy donated freezers. Mm -hmm. so a lot of freezers, just by the way. That's Best Buy donating what? Nine yeah. freezers? It's been Ten? a lot of freezers over the yeah. years. You know, yeah, they've been they've been really good to us for sure. Yeah. Um, I, Alice, do you want to speak to? Do you want me to start? Yeah. With what we need, I think like we have gotten it down to a fairly uh, specific art slash science okay. of like the food that people want, like the food that works. Yeah. And so I think what we're always after is um, a way to get more product for our limited donations, which, I mean, okay. all of this is funded. We're going to highlight Air Canada Foundation, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, they have come in in a major way in the should go take that picture, too. Mm -hmm. to, um, to support this program. So I think some of the things that we could always continue to use is um, people who can give us the product that we know is helpful to families at a lower price point. So we do have some food donated. And then we also have some food that we, we work with the companies directly. Um, we do some food from Save On, but we're always looking for ways to get like these products that we know are hot um, in a more cost-effective way. Is there anything to add to that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll also make you know one one thing that I really wanted to work on when I started here is kind of increasing the variety of food, both from like a taste perspective, right? Like if you're at the hospital for six months inpatient. Maybe you don't want to eat mac and cheese every single day. Yeah, butter chicken on the tenth day is a lot of butter chicken. Yeah. 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 Um, so uh, being able to just introduce more variety in that way, but also um, is really thinking about people's dietary needs, um, like foods that are vegan, that are gluten free, that are halal. Um, they tend to be more expensive mm -hmm. um, as well, and so trying to make sure we always have some of that in the freezer, but also being very aware of you know what our budget is, right, um, and kind of how we can balance those priorities. Mm -hmm. The other one that we could probably talk about is snacks, because snacks is a huge one. The snack cupboard is over there. Um, if there's companies that have like those those products with long shelf life that's an easier one for us to store and we're providing so it doesn't need to be frozen and no. does not need to be a meal yeah so we do do a lot of meals and then we also do a lot of snacks because um, sometimes families go in for an appointment um, in the outpatient clinic and then they end up staying all day right and so we want to make sure that not only the kid who is at the appointment but sometimes siblings have to tag along that everybody has like just snacks um, and again they don't want to like leave to go get a meal because they might miss their doctor who they're waiting right. for um, so that's another big one that we've had um, some folks come in previously and provide really high quality snacks for both the adults and the kids. We know snack is great. We know snack people. Well, there's lots of snack, snack people. people. You're listening. We, we know want you people. snack people. Yeah. Snack people. Snack yeah. people. <laughs> well, I mean, think of like bars are easy, right? Because mm -hmm. it's portable and as long as they're nutritious to some degree, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I'm assuming that, but it, because it's into children's, like I'm assuming we're staying away from peanuts and. It is Things like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. 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 Just to make sure we know that. Yeah. I think the other thing around, like, um, the food that we choose to put in, we try to not have a lot of barriers on, um, or judgment on, like, what people need in this time. So if there's, like, a granola bar that would maybe be, like, a higher sugar index, right. we're not going to say no, um, just because, like, again, we want kids to eat. And we've talked to oncologists before, and they always say the most important thing for kids is that they're just getting calories. Just calories, man. Just getting calories in their body. Even think that for the parents too, right? Yeah. It's the same yeah. thing. So like yeah. a chocolate bar, I know there's a lot of empty calories, but sometimes a Kit Kat is the only thing that makes you smile. Right. That's right. Right. So. Back to the, like care. Of yeah. What, yeah. What going to make people feel. Right. Just, yeah. So it's not a call out. We're not, we're not, we're not trying to save the planet per se. Or, mm -hmm. It's trying to make people feel just no, a little bit of less stress. Well, I think the important thing for us is variants. And so yeah, for sure. And so we're in freezer that there's smoothies. Um, from Blend for You, which is an amazing company, and if someone is needing something that's more nutrient dense, right. then we have that option. But we also have the granola bar, so like right. we want the whole spectrum of snacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and I would love to talk about our other main program, Nourish at Home, too. Mm -hmm. um, so 
we talk about how food is more than just calories. Calories are a big part of it, but right. it's also a gift of time, energy, comfort, and you see that especially in our Nourish at Home program. Mm -hmm. So these are boxes we send to families once a month, and these are family-sized meals. So I'll show you inside mm -hmm. the freezers here. <clears throat> And you can see right away, we're talking much bigger portions of yeah. stuff, right? Um, and this is just an easy way for them to stick something in the oven uh, mm -hmm. and not have to think about buying groceries, meal planning, prepping, all of that stuff. Um, so we tend to see families, um, I would say two large categories. One is families who have just been discharged from the hospital. Um, it is not over at that point. It is far from over. There are still a lot of treatments, a lot of appointments they need to keep up with, um, other children at home, uh, schooling, all of that. Um, so this is becomes a great help during that transition, right? It's the, the time you no longer have to spend meal planning, grocery planning, you can spend with your kids. Um, the other is for uh, families that are inpatient, at, are still inpatient at BC Children's, um, particularly those who are staying at Ronald McDonald House. Um, they they have like freezer, a kitchen, etc. There, um, and this can be a, is is kind of a, a support to those families right. in, in that particular situation. Mm -hmm. Are there other things like is there um, like drink options? Maybe at the hospital, I know there's probably vending machines, but let's say you had people that are doing, whether it's a kombucha or something, I don't, I don't care what it is, or, you know, the teas. Like, do they have water that they can boil and things like it's something? Yeah. Again, not, not the children's side, but not a shitty coffee from the crappy machine. Yeah, like, you can you do things like that? Coffee that is provided by another nonprofit. Yeah. Um, and there is some tea. We go in and make smoothies. So, yes. yeah. um, so that's one of our programs as well, so maybe Sundays. Um, okay. We go in with some Vitamixes, a lot of frozen fruit. We also make individual fresh veggie packs, um, and we're able to kind of provide that fresher side of things because we're in there more frequently now, right? So we can, you know, clean out what's not used. We can make sure that the produce is still fresh. Um, but Smoothie Sundays has been just a huge hit because it is that kind of fresh component that you're not always getting when you have to you know, we open a cardboard box right, right? Eat, and it's like, tough things that are preserved yeah. yeah who's doing all that though like you must have a, a crew oh um you meet alice <laughs> yes and, I, i'm just and Corey. And Corey. yeah i'm assuming like okay like what are you you guys are you on smoothie sunday detail or do I mean, we have, they are but there's volunteers i'll yeah. say do you have um, people that help yeah I mean, sure. in organizationally, I mean, it's not all in food, but organizationally, we have seven staff and over 130 volunteers. Oh, wow. So oh, that's volunteers awesome. volunteers who are through here all the time. Um, Alice already mentioned that we have volunteers who drive the food right. to the hospital. We have people who come and make the smoothies. Yeah, tomorrow um, we're, we're doing a Nourish at Home Packing Day, so that's what these boxes are behind you. Um, each of those will be... And I peek inside the box. It's just a box. There's just a it's box. It's just a liner and a. Can you say, did you eat everything? <laughs> I know you were going to say that. No, Phil, I did not. Um, but volunteers will come and pack those boxes as well and prepare them for shipping. Um, and that actually brings us to, you know, you kind of asked us, like, <laughs> what do you need? Yeah. Um, this is, you know, looking at it long term, the food programs have grown so much. It is incredible when you look at the numbers. You know, starting in 2020, we sent 2,700 units of food that whole year. And last year, we sent over 23,000. And that's been four short years. So that's are, almost tenfold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, growing at an incredible rate. Um, we started with one chest freezer. We now have 10. Uh, <laughs> one chest freezer. But we, wow. We, yeah. Yeah. It's, in, I, it's incredible. Um, but we, we are bumping up against that capacity issue again, right? Like okay. there is a bit of a wait list for Nourish at Home uh, because this this is this is where the boxes go. We can only fit four boxes per chest freezer. Um, and so we are we are limited by that. And so that Oh, I've never thought of that. You gotta keep these cold. Yeah, maybe talk to the pros at that because it is Oh, I never thought of that. Because I'm thinking like, Oh yeah, oh my yeah. god, you cube out so fast. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, it all started kind of with the cold chain process, which yeah. um, Richard Liu is um, he's an amazing guy who um, really worked with us every step of the way, talking through it, um, how to package the food, um, what kind of materials to use, the kind of ice packs we need, the kind of 
cooler liners that we need um, to have the food stay frozen for as long as possible. Um, it needs to be safe to eat when it gets, for to, sure. when it gets to people's homes. Um, and then we have incredible partners at Corporate Couriers and at Perlator who help us deliver that food um, within that 24-hour time frame. Um, and so once, you know, families place the order, they can customize their order. You know, that is something that took a long time to work towards as well, is making sure we have that inventory and making sure that they can, you know, maybe my kid likes pizzas, they don't like mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You can just order pizzas, that kind of thing. Um, and then we have volunteers who will pull from these freezers and they work from, you know, that order list and pack it exactly what the family wants to eat. Um, and they pack it according to those cold chain instructions, best practices. Uh, and then the boxes go into our chest freezers to deep freeze overnight um, so that they are as cold as possible. Again, though, you, got, it, you, you cube out so fast. Yeah, so like, you can't put anything in here. You know, we need, we need someone with a warehouse that's got, you know, a walk-in freezer. Walk freezer, probably what, like 20 by 40 that maybe is not used or mm -hmm. something that, you know, they could, they could stack, not, I mean, this is great, but no, but four, I mean, it's, it's, you, you're, you, you're dead before you, be right? well, you put it on pallets and stack it to the roof. Yeah, exactly. Freezer, like, you have wire racking in it. In a walk well, I mean, that's all you can do because those boxes, you're, you're done. The freezers are over. Alice um, and the team do it twice a month. Yeah. Like this many boxes twice a month. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, again, that's our max capacity. You're, you're, yeah, because you're, you're maxed out. Yeah. 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 Wow. So walk-in freezer, guys. Walk-in yeah. freezer. Somebody. <laughs> the snack people in a walk-in freezer. Snack that's all we ask for. <laughs> yeah, it's all we ask. It's a small ask. <laughs> For those of you who have 100,000 square wow. feet of warehouse, you're not using that back five yeah. mm -hmm. or less. It doesn't even have to be that big. A 20 by a 20 by 40 freezer, and you'd be you'd be set. Mm -hmm. Again, at least you could stack to the ceiling. I I, I, I said, wow. As soon as you said that, I thought like you'd yeah, be kidding me. Wow. Holy moly, man. You guys are, but you guys are like. You've figured some stuff out. Yeah, you've like, really... Uh, there are companies that haven't quite figured out cold chain. None of the guys that we talk to. <laughs> no, none of them, of course. <laughs> I mean, Other people. I mean, Richard's a great example. Like, we've had people in the industry help us every step of the way. And so everyone in the in the food community really has been very generous, yeah. Pace included, like, with all the things that they donate. Um, really? Lomita at Spice It Up, um, Eat Well, who does the butter chicken. Like, there's so many people in this community who we feel like we could call and ask, and they will answer our calls and help us figure it out. Which is, which is really nice, though, right? Yeah. Well, and important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's donation of product, but there's also donation of time and expertise. Yeah. Expertise yeah. would probably be a nice one, right? I mean, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. We love this community. I mean, part of what we do, because we... We see this a lot. We don't see it to this level, but we do. We see. Oh, because we're both unfortunate. We haven't, we haven't had kits that needed this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or been in a situation where we've had to worry yeah. about children's hospital. Yeah. yeah. But we, we see, like, oh. the community is a really strong one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And very generous. Very generous. Yes. Yeah. Wow. wow. Guys, this is this it's is impressive. So, a couple of ads, they're doing some pretty amazing things. Wow. You can help out. Where, where do they find you if they want to? They want to find you. Or if they want to contact yeah, either of you. Kids Cancer Foundation, our emails are on that page. Um, okay. You can easily get to the info and it'll get to us. Okay. Um, send us an email. We're really active on Instagram and Facebook if you want to give us a follow. Um, lots of fun content on there. A lot of behind the scenes stuff. We try cool. to keep it light and tell lots of stories. Good. Um, so those are ways that you can easily get in touch with us. Yeah. Well, Thanks for thank coming you. by. Yeah. Thank you. For <laughs> Thanks for having us. Gosh. So, least we could do yeah <laughs> i mean really well, no, I, the snack cupboards are a little empty right now but i'll, uh -huh. I'll just show you yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this it's one funny we actually dedicate just for old dutch because they donate we had all easter weekend things. which was great um, families all around and then my dad decides to go get really sick last Thursday, night so he's in not burnaby Dutch's. general right um and then i, I thought we were actually gonna lose it i know it's one of those just brutal night right but uh, now I got to go to the house because I left yeah. mom up there um, so to go get a you know some soup to warm up because I can't eat this shit. Um, and this is that whole Italian man. I can't eat. They, 
they made him a oh my god, they made him a chicken sandwich, and he just looked at it and said, "Okay, relax. I'll go eat some soup. <laughs> eat some crackers and soup. I know what you want." And secondly, it has our website on it. So I and that's you know that's you know that's the tail end of life. I mean, it's always there's no tragedy in it. Goodness. You know, when you're with a child, I, I can't even imagine if the kids were sick. I, I would be 